What's up everyone? It's your local Giga Chad back here with his new fresh fade haircut because every single time I get a haircut or decide to style myself, I want to look like one of my Jewish icons. So basically this time I went from Sam Bankman Freed over to Drake. Anyways, as you can see, I'm feeling sexy and I'm ready to talk about databases. So let's get into it. Alrighty, so in our last video, we talked about different types of SQL databases. What I really mean is relational databases, but this is the term that everyone uses, so it is the term that I will use in order to stay consistent. So today, we're going to introduce another term, which I've talked about in this channel in the past, but not in this series, and that is going to be new SQL. So whereas our traditional SQL databases are things like MySQL and PostgreSQL, New SQL databases have kind of arisen during the era of NoSQL databases, but they've kept that relational mentality. And the reason they've done this is because they offer some type of extra twist to the typical SQL database that makes them worth discussing. So today, obviously, based on the title of the video, we're going to be talking about VoltDB, and then I'll probably do Spanner, which is Google's version of a new SQL database, in maybe the next video. So the question really boils down to this. How do we speed up transactions? Well, if you remember from last video, I basically insinuated that MySQL does two-phase locking, where every single row has a lock that can be grabbed in either shared or exclusive mode. Uh, shared mode is for reading transactions or read-only transactions. Exclusive mode are for transactions that include writes. Uh, similarly, Postgres has serializable snapshot isolation, where you read from a consistent snapshot. The database keeps track of the other transactions that are also basically using that piece of data in order to fulfill their own needs. And then if one of them commits, you might have to roll back one of those transactions. Of course, these are somewhat slow. And obviously, they're kind of the main bottleneck to getting better performance within a single database node. So VoltDB has actually come around and tried something new, which is the following, actual serial execution. So as opposed to you know using locking, trying to do multi-threading or anything like that, it has just gone ahead and literally created a queue of things to do. These are our operations, and they're literally going through one single CPU thread. So the problem here, obviously, is that if we've only got one single CPU thread, then the bottleneck of our system is actually going to be the CPU. And it means that as a result of that, we need to be able to finish every single operation as quickly as humanly possible. And so how can we actually go ahead and do that? Well, first, we need to evaluate what our bottlenecks are, other than the CPU, of course, because we want to be able to make all of those operations on the CPU as fast as possible. So hopefully two main ones should stick out to you guys, the first being this guy right here. What is this? Obviously, it is our hard drive. Hard drives are pretty slow to write to, simply just because they're not really part of your computer. They're kind of an add-on, and it's also just a metallic disc that literally spins around, and we have to jump around this chode thingy and basically find where our data is that we want. And then the second one is going to be network latency, right? If I am uh, someone who's writing to the database and I want to do that multiple separate times, all within the same transaction, that is going to seriously bog us down. It would be a lot better if we can keep every single operation or every single transaction to one singular interaction with the database over the network. We'll talk about how we can do that later in the video. So how do we deal with disk? in terms of speeding things up such that we can improve our performance and avoid the overhead associated with disk operations. Well, VoltDB said screw disks. We're putting every single thing in memory. It's effectively like a cache or a Redis instance really, but as opposed to just being a typical key value store, it's still a relational SQL type database. So what is the pro of doing something like this? Well, the biggest one that should stand out is that now we have hash indexes. We can basically keep all of our data in a hash map, and that means that we now have O of 1 reads and writes. Of course, it's worth noting that you know just by nature of having a hash map, you keep all of your stuff in different places on memory, and as a result, if you wanted to run a range query, that would be tough. For that, instead, you could do an optional tree set index or a sorted set, and that would make your operations O of log n. Of course, as well, you might be thinking, well, shoot, if all of our operations are going into memory, how are they going to be durable? How can we actually ensure that if our database is to go down, these things aren't going to break? Well, we do have the option for a write-ahead log. However, of course, if that log is going to be on disk, that is going to slow us down too, hence why it's optional. So what's the main con of having everything in memory? 
Well, of course, memory is expensive. And what that means is that now you cannot have as much of it on a single node. And of course, that means that if you want to have the same size data set, you need more partitions. Now, we've spoken about why having a ton of partitions with a SQL database in a distributed setting can be pretty inconvenient. It means that for a lot of your reads and writes, you're probably going to have to be reading from and writing to multiple places, especially if you need your data to be consistent and accurate. All writes that go to multiple partitions are going to require distributed transactions and thusly two phase commit, which we know is really slow because it requires multiple round trips to every single database because of course we need to basically propose, get a response, and then after that we can finally commit. So that's three trips between the two databases. So obviously two-phase commit is really going to slow things down. We wanna be running that as infrequently as possible. And if we're constantly doing cross partition writes, that is going to be a problem. Of course, if you do use VaultDB, the aim should be to be doing as little of that as humanly possible. So how can we also deal with network latency? Because we mentioned that this is a bit of a problem as well. Well, let's first present on the left over here, the bad case. Let's say we as as opposed to the client, maybe this would be better if I represented it as the application server. But either way, the point is we're telling the database to do something. The database responds with some value. And as a result, we reach back out to the database asking it for some other query. At the same time, what we could do instead is in advance, we could send all of that logic to the database. You know, we have our entire script here with the conditional if else. Oops, sorry, I got my eraser out. But we have our if else right here. And as a result, now all we have to do is actually induce the script on our database as opposed to doing multiple round trips. And that right there is known as using a stored procedure. Now, stored procedures are kind of looked down upon, I think, these days, simply just because, you know, it's kind of hard to manage that code. It's not really treated as you know, full application code. But when you are kind of strapped for time on each operation, you do basically have to make some sacrifices and using stored procedures in this case is going to be one of them. So what's our conclusion? Well, VoltDB within an actual systems design interview probably isn't something that you're ever gonna bring up. Most likely just because your interviewer isn't gonna know about it and you're gonna sound like you're a crazy person if you start talking about it. However, it is very important as a case study in terms of other ways that you can achieve isolated transactions. Achieving ACID transaction is basically the main bottleneck to any database that is attempting to use them. And so as a result of that, this approach of literally running every single thing on a single thread is very interesting. Of course, it makes us have to give up certain functionality in order to be able to do it. And there are a lot of concessions that we need to be, to be able to make, but nonetheless, it is worth talking about. Anyways, guys, have a good week, and I'm looking forward to making the video about Spanner.